Good morning everybody and welcome to Tips and Clips number 7. Tips and Clips are exactly that, the little tips and or clips that I feel warrant recording along the way but don't make up the whole own video. So what I do is record them anyway and then compile them into a Tips and Clips video. And today I've got something to talk about about water butts, uh, then about crop protection and then we'll finish off with something about my broad beans let's get on with it so excuse the mess in here still not quite sorted out ready for the season but this is one of my water butts look at the state of this in my main polytunnel and this is just algae and what i'm going to be doing with this is skimming off all this algae and then i'll use this water to wet some of the drier beds probably outside or maybe in the polytunnel before refilling it for the season this whole water butt will get will get cleaned out properly um, and then refilled ready for the season. Now this water butt outside uh, needs a jolly good clean out because it's absolutely filthy. You can see the the scum as the water levels dropped in there, the scum that's all over the edges. And if I just tip this back, you'll be able to see all the mud and stuff that's in the bottom. Now. You want to be cleaning your water butts out regularly. You don't want this in here. This can breed bacteria and it can affect your plants. It can affect you, um, Legionnaires or Legionella, those sorts of things. So you've got to be careful. So, I mean, I can swill this out, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'll put some water in it and give it a, a very good scrub out with a brush. You can see that's coming clean now. but get rid of all that and start fresh and I'll do that with all my other water butts as well and I'll transfer I won't waste the water I'll transfer it to another butt whilst I'm cleaning them out this water I'll just tip um, so that I don't waste the water and then refill them to start clean for the next season now protecting your plants is very important we've all seen these blue hoops before on um, most allotments and you just throw some netting or some plastic over depending on what crop you're growing in there to help protect it against pests another example here is this my carrot boxes these have got EnviroMesh over them uh, to stop the little carrot flies getting in my carrots and I've got two of those up and planted there and over here I've got my hot box I've got my broad beans in there you'll see that in a in a few minutes time and then we go to the extent of building polytunnels to protect against the weather. So everything we do at gardeners, especially this early part of the year, is all about protection. But there is another way you can divert pests away from your plants. So let's have a look at that. So you could protect your crop by keeping them under cover, protect them from the weather. You could protect them from pests by putting uh, cloths or uh, plastic or netting around them but you can also protect your crops by being diversionary now a good example of that is planting so in a row of carrots then a row of onions then a row of carrots each smell masks the other one to just to a point it doesn't mask it all the way and deters the carrot root fly or the onion root fly so that you get a better crop at the end of the day. It won't be completely pest free, but it's on the way and it's better than no protection at all. I prefer, prefer to grow mine separately so that when one crop comes out, I can prepare that bed and get another crop in. That's why my carrots are protected. I don't really suffer from onion pests here. I don't like the Zallium leaf miner as well. That's another one. I don't get those problems here, so I'm happy enough to grow my onions out in the open. But with other things like my tomatoes, um, you could suffer something called white fly. They'll get into your polytunnel and get amongst your tomatoes. And I like to divert them away from my tomatoes by planting either marigolds or tagetes. Tagetes are just a marigold but with a much smaller flower and that's what I tend to grow in there. I'm only going to sow one of these but I'm going to sow all of these under cover in a minute. It's a little bit windy out here for, for sowing but I thought I'd have, a, I'd have a little go and this is an African fantastic mix. It's a Tagetes um, and if you can open the packet 
which seemingly I can't. There we go. Just sow them on the surface of some compost. They're a longish seed. There's only a few in this packet. Spread them about a bit. And then cover them with a light sprinkling of compost. Water them. Keep them somewhere warm. You can leave them in your polytunnel or greenhouse now this time of year, it's April, if you want to. I'm going to take these home and put them on my bench propagator and bring them on quicker and then as soon as they're germinated I'll prick them out and fetch them down here and leave them to grow on in the polytunnel. So that's a diversionary tactic and that's well worth doing because the smell these give off, as I say, deterred a white fly. And you can plant them all around your plot as well. I'm going to do two or three of these with just normal marigold sort of plants that will grow to this sort of size with big flower heads on like this. And they'll go home and go in hanging baskets or troughs or go around the ends of the beds just to make the place look nice as well. And you don't realise that actually lifts your spirits but you don't actually physically realise that. So that's another method of protecting your crops is to divert the pests away from it. You're not killing anything and you're acting in symbiosis with nature in that way. You're not killing the pests, but you're also at the same time not killing the good animals by using the pest killers. Um, so it's also worth looking up about companion planting. Um, You'll, you'll find things out like this about the marigolds growing at with tomatoes, but you'll also find out which crops grow well together. Some crops don't get on with each other. And if you look up companion planting and start doing a little bit of reading, a bit of a time so it sinks in, then you'll find out what grows well together and that increases your knowledge and your crop yields at the end of the year as well. So it is well worth looking into. The more you know about how to protect your crops, the better you will do. So there we go. Now it's the 2nd of April today and I am planting broad beans. And this is my second batch, would you believe? I planted, I sowed some and planted them last autumn. And it's a, a hardy variety called Aquadulce. And the weather we had the start of December, the deep freeze just killed everything because broad beans are only hardy down to about minus 10 and those temperatures went far below that. So um, after Christmas, I, when I think roughly when I was sowing my sweet peas, I sowed some more and they've stayed in the tunnel ever since and they've germinated and done all right. And I'm just going to plant these today. I've already got two rows in. Um, now, it's not too late, if you haven't got any, to sow these. And you could sow these, really, for sow them direct into your soil for the next month. You could even go into May with them. But if you do go into May, what I would advise is that you go with a dwarf variety, something like one called the Sutton. It's very reliable. And they'll grow to just a little bit higher than, than these and you'll get a, a decent crop from them. And I'm also tying these in simply because we are a bit of an exposed site here and they will get blown to bits if I'm not careful. We'll get some wind, it blows right across the site and can very easily decimate them. You might not need to stake them if you're on a a pleasant site where you don't get too much of the heavy winds but something I have to do and I'll tie them in when they get to the top of the canes as well and that'll be, that'll be it and done. Now I've got these in my hot box, I've taken the front off, I'll put the front back on and the lid back on simply because they've been in the polytunnel all their life now and they're used to those warmer protected temperatures. The plants themselves are quite sappy. I'll leave them in there for a few days um, for the roots to start getting out into the soil. Then I'll take the lid off, leave them for another week 
and then I'll take the frame away and they should be hardened off enough. So there's no need for me to put the plants outside hardening off. I can do all that in the confines of this little area here. When it comes to picking them, just pick and keep picking them and you'll encourage more beans to grow. And I'll pick them even if there's only two to pick because I can empty those pods and we'll go nicely with a salad or something. So just keep picking them when they start fruiting. So there we go, a few more hints, tips and clips for you in that one. Don't forget to subscribe for more as I produce more content, you'll find out more about what I'm doing and how everything does on my plot. But for now, that's it. Please look after yourselves everyone and stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Ta-ra now. <laughs>